India is reeling from a devastating second wave of the coronavirus. For the past two weeks or so, the country has been racking up between 300,000 and 400,000 fresh new COVID cases every day and up to 4,000 new deaths a day. Both of these numbers are severe undercounts. The ground reality is almost certainly much, much worse. Suffice it to say, this is the single biggest domestic crisis that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has faced since coming to power in 2014. The second wave of the coronavirus has struck at a time when actually voters in five Indian states have gone to the polls to select new regional governments. Uh, the BJP of Narendra Modi was only successful in two of these states, the northeastern state of Assam and the southern Union territory of Puducherry. The biggest prize on offer was the eastern state of West Bengal. This is a state that the BJP has never controlled before. It was a prestige battle. The prime minister and his party poured a lot of money, resources, and political capital into dislodging the incumbent government of Mamata Banerjee and the Thirnamal Congress. It came up short. And this is surely a major setback to the BJP's attempts to establish a kind of pan-Indian political hegemony. Now, I think it would be unwise to look at these state election results and automatically assume that Narendra Modi is paying a political price for his government's mishandling of the coronavirus crisis. For one, uh, most of the voting actually was already completed before the second wave started to pick up. But secondly, As you look out into the future, uh, there are structural reasons why Narendra Modi may be able to withstand even this kind of political crisis. Uh, For starters, national elections aren't due until 2024. Three years uh, in political terms is a lifetime away. Uh, Secondly, there is still no national leader who can go head to head, toe to toe with Mr. Modi who has the kind of credibility with the Indian voter. Just in the past year alone, uh, India has uh, suffered a border skirmish with China. It has seen its economy contract by almost 25% a year ago. Uh, We have seen a massive uh, internal migrant crisis due to the stringent coronavirus lockdown imposed last spring. Despite all of these things, Modi's political popularity has actually remained intact. He is an exceptionally politically resilient character. Uh, And the last thing I would say is that Modi has shown a really uncanny ability to change the political narrative, that when his back is against the wall, he has been able to use his unique charisma, his bully pulpit, his party's massive resources, and social media savvy to redirect Uh, to deflect attention onto something else. And so I can expect that come 2024, when voters select their next national government, uh, we are going to see Modi reinvent himself once more.